Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. And today I am not going to bother you too much with my ugly mug because we're just going to focus on the gloriousness that is the Maximus Apex. It's obviously the Z790, it's the most recent one, it's the white one. Uh, I'm still hoping that we're going to see a Z790 Deluxe personally, but I have been very lucky to get the Z790 Apex in for me to have a play with. And I do have some quite funky stuff that we're going to be doing with this in uh, a week or so, depending on launches and workload and all that kind of stuff. But I wanted to give you a preview today so that we can have a good look around it, get a good meaty teeth, have a look into the... Well, we always used to get excited about hardware. Hope we still do. Anyway, inside the box, because I do want to show you this, because I think this is rather wicked. Now, you can literally set your, let's say you are on 600,000 and anyway, you can set your uh, overclock on it. It's just a click counter. It doesn't really do anything, but it's cool and I like it because it's different. And you could hang it. You could wear it like Flavor Flav, like a necklace. There are some crazy uh, memes of me looking like Flavor Flav online. You get your drivers with a USB stick that is in there. You get the added extra this has two nvme ports on it it goes on the side up by the uh, memory and then there is an extra add-on pcr express 5 add-in card should you want to use it not sure that you would for overclocking uh, because if you do add this in either you've not got a graphics card in or if you do run both slots then makes the both the slots run at eight times now i've not done any uh testing to see whether turning the PCR Express 5 down to eight times makes any difference yet. But then we haven't got any PCR Express 5 hard drives yet either. So uh, it's a bit of a mixed bag in not knowing, basically. Now, what do we have to talk about today? Obviously the Apex, not quite white, very close. I'd say it's a very light gray, PCB, but it does look the part. It does look extra special. Uh, silver heat sinks, white detailing down the side, down the back of the I.O. Uh, these do light up actually. So the eye lights up and then you inside the little slats up here lights up. Uh, as we're talking about aesthetics though, that has to be the greatest chipset heat sink in history. I mean, I love that. It's just extruded and says ROG on it. It's not because it says ROG, it's just because they've managed to get the branding done correctly and make it a part of the heatsink. I absolutely love it. Now, around the outside of the CPU, you can see there are chokes all over the place and they actually go down the bottom as well. Now, it, they do say that there are a total of uh, 20 plus zero power phases. Although I've counted around here and there's like 26 chokes. So I'm not sure quite what's going on. What are the sum of that's for the um, memory and stuff, but there's 26 chokes all the way around the outside. That there, as you can see the uh, power stages, microfine alloy chokes, SMD capacitors. So they are solid polymer capacitors. But when we're talking about the uh, VRMs, it does have uh, they are teamed. Now, one of the things I did want to draw attention to is the fact that with the team, compared to a doubler, you can see that with a doubler, you only ever get one of the MOSFETs being driven at once, and then you have the 12 volt EPS in at the top, so your CPU power coming in. And it's either one or the other, it's never both at the same time, which is why their teamed one, you can see that there's actually two powers in, two being driven at the same time, manages to spread the load, drop the temperatures. There's lots of good things to be said about it. Uh, and when they first started doing this, a lot of people were kind of against it, but I've never personally seen an issue with the way Asus have done it and the temperature difference between the VRMs on Asus boards and competition is rather nuts, if I'm completely honest. Now, we will have a good look around the board together. So. I'm going to go very slowly round the outside so that you can have a look. Now there's a full speed fan header. 
there. Now that's great for benching and stuff because it literally will just plug it in. Doesn't matter what fan you plug in or whether you have a fan out cable, it will just be full speed. Uh, if you haven't got one of these motherboards though, just remember if you plug into the water pump AIO header, that will normally do the same thing. And there's actually one of those there. But CPU uh, power there, so you've got CPU fan and CPU optional. You've got your water pump header there. We're going to come down the outside. We're looking for fan headers. So there's a chassis fan header there. Come down again. I believe that is, yep, that's a full speed fan for you there. This is the water cooling zone, but there is a chassis fan here. Here, you can see it looks like a fan header, but that's actually the water flow header. And then you've got a couple of thermal probes. And then coming along the bottom, there's not any more fan headers, but there is one in there hiding underneath the heat sinks so that's where your fan headers are but up here shielded eight pins solid pins in there as well you can see as you come across there is a vertical rgb and it's addressable rgb and then a normal uh, rgb up here it's giving us the layout for the IO code LEDs up here, and it's always the same anyway, but CPU, DRAM, PCR Express, and then boot. I'm actually trying to read to see what that switch is, and I think it's the retry button. But I'm struggling to see. I'm sure that's the retry button anyway. And then there's other buttons down here now. There's other buttons here. Now, what I can do is there is a lovely schematic that we can see they've got a safe boot button bclk buttons probe it which is these so you, those little copper bits you can put your uh, multimeter on might be a bit easier if i just zoom out a bit uh there's the retry button slow mode switches ln2 modes bios switches that you can flick pause switch sounds cool you can actually stop a benchmark halfway by pausing it so you can retune some of the overclock settings i think you can actually use it to top your dice pot up or your ln2 pot or even just let temperatures come back down a bit because they've gone a little bit wild i think that's a pretty cool thing uh you can see here 24 pin again all solid connectors USB uh, 3.2 Gen 2 here. No, 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 that's 20 gigabits uh, as well. It's also got a 60 watt um, charge mode on it as well. Obviously, the switch here for your PCR Express. USB 3 connector there. Added 6 pin connector. You don't need to run this for normal systems. You might need to if you're trying to break world records with graphics cards, but for normal people at home, you're probably not going to need this. Six SATAs down the side. Then, like I said, you have the water cooling area here, which you do have two internal USB 2s here, which is nice. There's the BIOS switch that we spoke about before. Uh, more water cooling here because, obviously, like I said, that is your uh, thermal probes and then your water pump header. Another USB 3 here. Coming along, more... RGB, if you did use this as a gaming rig, it's one four pin and then two, another one which is addressable. Now the Supreme FX that's over here, audio on this, it's got a Savitech SV3H712 amplifier on it. You've got, it's run off of the ALC4080 codec uh, and that uses a USB interface rather than the normal HDA in, interface. Uh, and it's 32 bit with 384 kilohertz of uh, audio resolution. Now, around the back, while I remember, there is actually sensors around the back for condensation uh, detection, which should help you guys that are actually going to end up freezing this and really pushing the boundaries with it rather than just having a 4090 in there and a big overclock on your CPU. Now, underneath this, there are two. Uh, M.2 ports, but they are both PCR Express 4. So even the one that's right up near the CPU is PCR Express 4, it's not 5. You need to use the add-in card to get the um, PCR Express 5. Obviously, I've said about the M.2s up here, you only get two DIMM slots. Now, a lot of people kind of mistake that 
and go, oh, well, I'm not going to be able to run and do um, loads of rendering because I'm not going to be able to get enough memory. It is an overclocking board. The fact that they only have two is to allow the fact that you can really push the memory frequencies and tighter times, and you'll probably get better memory performance out of this than you will a lot of the other boards. It's normally one of these boards or randomly an ITX board. Uh, because of just the two slots and the fact everything's so tightly packed together that people do end up doing really well with. Uh, around the back of the board, I have already said about 2.5 gig Ethernet, it's the only other time that you'll see the 20 gigabits a second uh, USB-C here. Although this one, I have, when I looked at uh, the data online, because I've not been able to get anything from Asus directly about this, it didn't say about 60 watt charge on this. It was only this one that was meant to have had the 60 watt charge. Uh, so a plethora of connections around the back, including normal gold plated audio connections, but Wi-Fi 6E, 2.5 gig ethernet, your BIOS uh, port, which if you are overclocking, you're probably gonna end up using this a lot for your BIOS flashback up here. Uh, and then PS2 ports. Again, I can see it in the comments already. Why have they got really old connectors? Lots of the overclockers still use PS2, PS2 keyboards and mice to keep things simple and you haven't got to worry uh, about things not being um, like USBs not starting up properly and all of that sort of stuff. It's just a case of keeping it simple. Um, so you might think it's old, but if it works, if it's not broke, why fix it? Now, it's obviously a beautiful looking board with a heck of a price tag. But we will see whether that price tag is warranted when we do do the full review. Now, I have got some funky stuff planned for this in that it's not going to get a normal kind of review from me. We're going to do the same sort of benchmarks, but I'm going to do a lot more stuff with it. Uh, I've got some really meaty memory currently sat on some 7000 megahertz memory, but probably have some 7200 megahertz memory coming. And we are really going to be trying to push the overclock on the CPU as well. So I've been talking to EK and I've got stuff here from EK. So we are not going to do it the normal way, but it is going to mean that we're just going to overclock things as far as I possibly can do without frying my processor, because obviously I need to use the processor for other reviews. Uh, but I'm going to push things as far as I can comfortably, and then we're going to review it in that sense. Sadly, I don't have the time or the ability anymore to dry ice or LN2. I've only ever really dry iced once. Um, although the 990X from Intel, I did manage to get that to six gigahertz many years ago. Uh, and some of the screenshots and stuff are still online, which is kind of cool. But we are going to have a good old play with this and really try to stretch its legs more than I would do in a normal review. But thank you for tuning in to the preview. Yes, it has been very quick and short and sharp, but it's because I just wanted to share the fact that I have one of these, share what the technology is on the board, the layout, so that you can get a good feel for it. And then we will be back fairly soon with a full review for you. Please remember to like, subscribe and comment. This has been the tiniest one. Uh, if you are one of the regulars, then today, I think we had churros the other day, didn't we? Damn it, that means we're gonna to have to have donuts today. So let me know what donuts you're eating in the comments underneath. Thank you very much for tuning in. This is Tiny Tom Logan.